A lot of Australians are concerned that the power grid here can't handle electric cars. And you know, if you're a car company who doesn't make and sell EVs, then there's probably a good chance that your CEO at one point in time has said, oh, EVs will collapse the power grid. They'll be, they're unsustainable because the grid will just be annihilated. Is that actually true? Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Keep in mind, many people, when they buy an electric car, do install solar. It's very, very common that this happens. It's kind of a cool side effect that when you buy an EV, a lot of people go, hang on a minute, why don't I charge this with free electricity? And they go and think, oh, actually, I'm going to get some solar. And they obviously do the numbers. They realize solar is actually a no-brainer. I published an article uh, which went into great depth on the research behind how much money you can make in the United States or will make on average if you buy a solar system. Now, the average payback apparently in the US over a 15 year period is said to be up to 50,000 US dollars, which seems too good to be true, especially considering the fact that solar here in Australia is about 50 to 60% cheaper than what it costs in the United States. Speaking of solar, I have a, a new solar system here. I had an old one in my house. It wasn't producing that much power. It was a five kilowatt system. I've changed now. I have a 26 kilowatt or 25.6 kilowatt system, and it produces enough power on most days of the year to fully charge, in fact, on all nearly all days, to fully charge an electric car from zero to 100%. So if you want to use my the company that I use, which I have the best reviews in Australia, I will put a link in the description. Now, Tesla have said that actually the power grid here can handle 1 million EVs easily. Now, that Tesla are being kind of misquoted here as to say the power grid can handle 1 million EVs, but they're just simply saying it can easily handle 1 million EVs, but it can handle more than this. Electric vehicle uptake doesn't pose a threat to Australia's power grid, according to local Tesla Energy Director Joseph Tadic. There's a bit more of this story, guys, and I'll explain what that is. But first, speaking at the All Energy Conference, Mr. Tadic told attendees EV charging represents a very small portion of Australia's power usage and claimed that even an explosion in EV sales would not change that. That's about 0.1% of the NEM national electricity demand. So if we go to a million vehicles in Australia, that's going to be a bit less than 1% of annual demand, or I should say of annual electricity demand here in Australia. Mr. Ditch also claimed, presently wasted renewable energy could comfortably supply the energy required to power an expanded charging network. So what he's saying here is that in Australia, we're curtailing or wasting literally hundreds of millions of dollars of electricity every year because there is too much renewable energy during the middle of the day and we don't have enough batteries to store that energy. Nowhere near. It's true. Now, that will change within a few years' time because of all the batteries we're building here in Australia. But as, as it is today, if we added hundreds of thousands of electric cars and people charged them during the middle of the day, it actually wouldn't cost a single cent more, technically. That's the crazy thing. The other crazy thing is solar is being installed at a record pace. The number of solar systems is not a record pace, but the actual amount of solar is because the average solar system size being installed today in Australia is double the size of five years ago. He went on to say, if you think about that in context of the Australian electricity system, that's a lot less than the amount of renewables we're curtailing. My key point there, the actual electricity we would need to add 1 million EVs to the grid is less than the amount of renewables we're curtailing or just getting rid of. So the energy is in the system and we can tailor it right now because there's negative prices during the day and we're flooding the system with solar that could quite easily go into EVs with a fleet of a million vehicles, in my opinion. The other thing is, by the time we have a million vehicles here in Australia, there'll be a lot more renewable energy. It's being installed at an incredible pace because solar is so cheap. Batteries now are being installed at a record pace here in Australia because they are now so much cheaper than what they used to be. It's estimated there are now more than 200,000 electric cars here in Australia. Tesla accounts for, I think, about 60% of those. All up, Tesla models consume around 150 to 200 gigawatt hours of electricity in Australia every year. And Tesla has 100 supercharger sites here in Australia. That's actually quite a lot because each site has multiple charging points. Mr. Tadic told the All Energy Conference that supercharger stations are used mostly during the day when electricity demand prices are at their lowest. So, I mean, Tesla's probably making a lot of money <laughs> because 
grid prices for electricity during the middle of the day when they're selling electricity to consumers going on these road trips and purchasing electricity at a supercharger location is very low. Uh, Tesla's markups are huge. You're talking probably 90%, 80 to 9% markup. But of course, they do have to pay rental site fees. I mean, Tesla doesn't own all these locations and they do have to recoup their investment into building out this supercharging network. New bi-directional charging as well is equipping EVs to send power back to the grid rather than just consume it. Now, car expert says in May, Mitsubishi was granted approval to roll out its bi-directional EV charging. Mitsubishi is not really that relevant to bi-directional charging in Australia. Uh, they don't even sell any EVs. So yeah, they have some plug-in hybrids, but that's not gonna play a big part in the grid here in Australia. What's probably more relevant is the fact that Tesla Model Y already has vehicle to grid built in. You can in fact also buy, there's a about a $1,000 kind of adapter on Amazon you can buy that enables your vehicle to work as a vehicle to grid product, not legally, but it does. So I'm just putting it out there, that does exist. If you have an EV and you wanna do it, you actually can. So keep that in mind. But Tesla Model Y is actually already vehicle to grid capable. It just hasn't been turned on. It's actually been proven um, by experts who were able to find the port under Tesla's front seat where it has vehicle to grid. Tesla says next year, 2025, their vehicles will have vehicle to grid. Now we can't confirm that's actually true, but I hope that that is the case. And considering the Model Y already has it and it just needs to be turned on, it does seem like it's likely to happen. Dr. Andrew Simpson from EV Networks, uh, Tesla and presently managing director of consultancy at Verdant Vision said, EVs will likely have a net positive impact on the national power grid. The empirical evidence to date, both in Australia as well as overseas, shows that large scale EVs have potential to be enormously beneficial for the grid, said Dr. Simpson. While there will certainly be some challenges to manage at large scale, prudent planning and system integration will lead to the mutual benefits of higher network asset utilization, as well as greater energy productivity in a lower, lower carbon economy and society. There's a few things going on here. One is that future vehicles, future EVs will have vehicle grid. Now, I don't know exactly when most of them will, but at some point they will. And that's like having, you know, five Tesla Powerwalls just in your car itself. I mean, like I mentioned before, as well as that, sucking up all that wasted electricity from the network is actually a net gain for the network, right? All that waste electricity during the day, using that in EVs actually helps improve network stability. So adding all these EV vehicles to the network today, if that were to happen overnight, that would be a net positive. Now imagine we need a lot more than that though. Imagine that say 10 million EVs are coming to Australia, which they will, there's no debt and there's no question. By the time that happens, you, you would logically assume that many of those vehicles would have vehicle to grid and act therefore as large batteries. But many people remember who buy an EV get solar, but many people who buy solar, they also buy their own power wall. That could be um, from, from Sunwise or from any company or Tesla power wall, but many of them do this. In addition to that, grids such as the New South Wales grid are kind of gearing up to be ready for people to be sending huge amounts of electricity into the grid. That's what they want to happen. In fact, they're relying on this to happen. The New South Wales is subsidizing people buying their own batteries because it's closing down the, the nation's largest coal power plants. It's closing them down and there's basically no way of stopping that. That is gonna happen. So New South Wales is planning on huge amounts of electricity being generated by individual homes. If everyone who has solar here in New South Wales had their own battery or an EV sending electricity into the grid when the grid needs it, in that peak period between 6 to 10 p.m., then the grid stability would be unbelievably good. Prices would go down and the network would be a huge improvement over what it is today. And that is the future, I believe, of electricity here in Australia. However, Victoria is actually saying they are going to triple the amount of electricity generation in the state. That's the government's plan, to triple generation within the next 15 years. They're gonna be adding so much solar power, wind and batteries that they say they will be able to actually provide three times as much energy as what the grid provides today. I don't think that will be even remotely necessary, but that is their plan. So even though yes, electric cars in theory would be a burden to the grid, if you just look at it from one angle, the overall picture shows that actually that's not the case. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.